Hello there and welcome back to Magical Star Sign. I'm the Orange Genius, but you may call me Eric, and we left off during the Starfall Festival. Let's get right to it. Terracotta's pots are considered the finest in the cosmos. No one has ever matched his craftsmanship. Stars falling, falling into new life. Your timing is impeccable, my friends. The climax of the Starfall Festival is almost here. That poor officer, he's returning to Cassia without knowing what remains to be missed to, to be missed by him. When our new potlings are brought to life, we hold a sacred ceremony to fill them. When I was bo born, for example, I received a gummy frog. To tell you the truth, it was a little slimy and a lot gross. But, oh, the music is still going on, that's nice. What does that cash wet cloak sell for? 8,000, you say? I guess that's worth, I guess. I'm selling that, yep, and leaving the shop right after. I should buy Wakey Tails, but I'm not. What's my health situation like? Ew. Everybody has full mana and full health, except for Lassie. She is missing quite a bit, <clears throat> so that's fine. I can't wait to see our new potlings. There's nobody in here. Because we know where Elder Kettle and um, the other one went. Terracotta sculpts all our new pots and Elder Kettle and Usher's new life into them. <clears throat> we work hard for it, but it's finally time for the festival. Hip, hip, hooray! And right at the peak of the Starfall Festival, there's a huge meteor shower. Oh, I guess they are falling stars, aren't they? That makes sense. I just can't wait to meet our new potlings. I wonder if it's just about time to fire those pots. I wonder if it's just about time to fire those pots. How exciting. All right, that's the end of that. Oh, really? All right, we'll get everything ready. Impressive work, Terracotta. Thanks, Kettle. I suppose it's time for you to lead the ceremony now. Hmm. Falling star, falling star, fall to our village, bring us new life. Fall on our village, bring us new life. Give your children a star of joy, a star of hope. Fill them with light. As your children will be born here, so they will be treasured here. We will give them all hope and joy. Let them not want, let them not worry. Falling star, falling star, bring us new life. Be joyous, rejoice and delight. What do we have here? Three new little potlings. Let the Starfall Festival begin! Let all welcome the new life! <laughs> I 
I don't know what it is, but the stars, but but the stars at night, man, they're really lovely. Wow, hey, hey, I mean, awesome, yeah. The stars are totally hot and stuff. I, I must really be tired. Wow, so that's where parts come from. The stars fall down from the sky and give life to the little parts. Amazing. I used to stare up into the sky and wish that I could climb right up to the stars and um, eat them, actually. Turns out they're not edible at all, but they never really teach you that in school, do they? Well, in my school they did. I wish I had a girlfriend. Under this romantic star-filled sky, I would press my oxygen intake port against her delicate speech generator. Beep. That's how that goes. Ah, Eric, you found me! I knew you would! You always do, Eric. You always know how to find me. Just like now. I believed... I believed you would find me again today, Eric. Eric, I'm the elders giving out star sugar stars. We should head over and get some. Wow. Wow. And Eric, you, under the star-filled sky, you found me. Ah! Eric disappeared! Boo! Here, this is a present for this, uh, from the stars for all you wonderful kids. Please take some. You got three sugar stars. That was worth leaving Lassie standing around there like a dumbass. Hey, I'm fine. I want to stay this way. I know you'll find me, Eric. No matter where I am, that's enough for me. That's... mature. Wow, so that's where past come from. If it weren't for your help, we'd never have finished this new batch of potlings. Thank you, Eric. Please take this and thanks. Comet book. Unnamed potling. I'm testing, testing. Let's see how these vocal cords work. Hello, I am a newborn pot. Ah, good. It's all working out nicely. Everything's so exciting. Hey, hello. Wow. Is that my voice? Sounds like weird. Ahem. <clears throat> I am, for the time being, part 1549, inspected by number 43. I think I'm probably meant for collecting rainwater. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. Hey, really, it's nice to meet anybody. There's a technical, uh, d there's technically no such thing as a baby part. We're all born fully formed, to, uh, so to speak. Don't ask how I know that. I can't explain how these things work. I mean, I just got here. Thank goodness the festival went ve went well. I know that we owe it all to you and your friends, Eric. I'm deeply grateful. If you were a part, I bet you would have more than a few admirers by now. So... Hey, it's a festival. Try to enjoy yourselves. Now... Oh. Ah, it's you. Something very special has been brought back from Capsicum Caverns, has it not? Was m it was told to me by Elder Cattle. It could be fate. Inside is where you should be speaking. Inside is where we should be speaking. Gather everyone and come in. Oh, what was it you found in Capsicum Caverns? Is that the Far Millennium Gummy? Yes. That's how I know it, at least. Yes, so it seemed to me. There are those who say a Millennium Gummy rests on each of the planets. Within each gummy, purified element elements are condensed. Once they were sought after by wizards and scientists alike. If this were shown to Grenadine, even that stubborn old dwarf might have his mind changed about helping you. Macaroon should be your next destination. The home of the dwarfs is where you will find Grenadine, the legendary engineer. His help must be sought if you are to make your way to the light planet. Would you like to be told more about the legendary Grenadine? Yes. Grenadine is the finest engineer in the cosmos. His knowledge is surpassed by none. He has looked into the skies for ages and he has concluded the following. The universe that we experience is not a physical object in nature. I don't get it. 
It has been imagined, imagined that the fabric of this universe is actually made of a cosmic soul. This cosmic soul is itself made of the combined souls of all the beings in the universe. All beings come from it and all beings will return to it. It is the idea of a mad genius and one that I can barely grasp myself. Once he made this discovery he became deeply engrossed in a dark and ancient text. The Book of the Darned. Correct. In his theory life itself is of little consequence. What matters more than life is the singularity of cosmic truth. More important than life? War! He knows that he is fated to die, as are we all. He accepts this and does not try to escape it. M Miss Madeline, too? She has read the Book of the Darned? Yeah, at least that's what some thief named Parfit told us. So who knows if it's really true? That book is cursed. If she has read it, she too will die. There's got to be something we can do. Come on, tell us how we can help. Grenadine will aid you. Huh? Grenadine? Sorry, I stopped paying attention a while ago. What are we talking about? Grenadine is the head engineer of the dwarves of Macaroon. Smooth. The most skilled engineer in all the universe. Oh. Would you like to be told more about the legendary Grenadine? Yes. Don't stop your... Grenadine is the finest engineer in the cosmos. His knowledge is, supposed by, is uh, surpassed by none. He has looked into the skies for ages, and he has concluded the following. Oh. Oh. Okay, can I skip this? No. Okay, I already read this out. Didn't think he was going to give me the same damn dialogue twice. Okay, I'm sorry about this. So we have to talk to someone else then. Miss Madeline, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. I wish I could, you know, skip this dialogue. Can I? What did I just do? All right. Miss Madeline. I heard that Earth was destroyed by robots just like me. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I just want to go to sleep. Grenadine's gonna do some... Uh, uh, gonna do what for us now? Fix the rocket or something? This is all a bit too hard for me. Eric, you figure it out. Well, right now I'm just gonna head to sleep. I'm gonna turn in. Sir Bet, what's wrong with you? Lassie said something about you dropping out of school. Is that true? It's not like I want to, it's just my, my family's not rich. They can't afford to keep me paying for tuition. You guys wouldn't understand, but they have to work hard f to pay for me, and they just can't keep up with the payments. So I have to, so I have to drop out. When, when you all go back to school, my desk will be empty. Why didn't you say anything? Aren't friends supposed to be able to talk about stuff like that? I'm sorry. It's really hard on me and I'm not really comfortable talking about it. Besides, Pico, I know how worked up you get about things like this. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. What are you saying? Are you saying I overreact? Is that it, huh? Uh, oh. I see what you mean. <laughs> well, I... What? I want to find an answer. I don't like not knowing. Good morning! I have a message for you. Rogan Josh, aka Yoke Art, says he has decided to leave. It seems he's returning to his home world. Whatever that is. Alright, for the moment, we got a new book. We got our hands on the media, media book and I uh, the comet book. 
and everybody's gonna learn Comet Shower. Now I'm gonna read up on what it does. Learned Comet Shower, an HP restoring spell that isn't affiliated with any sign. Nice. Very, very nice. So for the moment, we have done anything we can here. Let's teleport over to Macaroon. Because this is where we really want to be. We have all the bang berries. Say, do you have those 99 bang berries? Let's get on with the job then. Yes. Right, there it is, all done. You shouldn't have any problems using it, as I've made sure it's not afflicted, affiliated with any specific type of magic, understand? You got the Splode Book. Yeah, I'm gonna be using that. Splode Book. Everybody learn Splosion. What do you do? Learn High Art, a festive firework spell that isn't affi affiliated with any sign. Good, right? Oh, we don't know yet. Brandon Jean just got back. He's the um, head engineer, I suppose you'd call him. Anyway, he says... Uh, anyway, he says to me, he says, Any kids come by with a Millennium Gummy, you let him through. So, uh, is that you guys? Yep, that's us. Oh, shave my beard and knit me a sweater. I'm glad I asked, because I'd never have guessed, you, uh, guessed to look at you. Oh, no, 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 you, do, you don't need to show me. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? Nah, go right on in, kids. So this is where the legendary Grenadine is located. What's with this music, though? My god, that's not the music I... You know, associate with a damn mechanical and enge engineering genius? I oh, know. This is Condiment Tower. Only the most talented of dwarves ever get to listen to this music. Holy, welcome to Condiment Tower! It took us years to develop all the amazing technologies you see around here. That's the reason for the uh, that's the reason for the code or the beard. If you ever betray our secrets, you are banished from these halls forever. Holy! This is Condiment Tower, where the finest, dwar the finest dwarvish engineers do their finest work. I hear this. Listen to the bang of the hammers. <laughs> oh, I'm listening, all right. Listen, listen, but but not with your ears. Listen with your heart, I say. Oh, that's why what I'm doing wrong. Because that's the beating of Grenadine's heart, and it's his soul doing the hammering. Poetic, isn't it? You have got an elevator. I want to use it. They let you in? Weird. Normally they don't let any, anybody but dwarves in. So I take it you're here to have your ship rebuilt then. Yes, that is the truth. I'm so afraid of the boss, man. I can't relax. I don't even have time to hit the, hit the can. I'm gonna have to work a hundred times harder just to get all my work done. Uh, I don't know why I complain about it, though. It's just work, am I right? I've got so much work right now, I don't even have enough time to ask for approval on all the stuff I'm doing. Everything I've got, uh, got's torn to bits. My axe, my pick, even my beard comb. I don't know why I complain about it, though. It's just work, am I right? Yeah, Brown. It's just work. You're right. Got so much work to do. There's no time to even blow my nose. I know it's filthy, but I have to let my nose run and get all the crust all get all crusty on my beard. Ah, I don't know why I complain about it. You know, you know the drill. God, that was that's a gross thought. We've used we used to have a factory in the land of light, Grenadine and the rest of us. We left it behind so that we could fulfill a dream. Not really my dream exactly, but it was someone's dream, that's for sure. I don't know what it was, but it was important enough for Grenadine to risk his life for, so it sounds pretty big. 
can't really wrap my head about it around it, but Granadine was telling me that the universe is like an onion, right? So what he's telling me, the whole universe is just a big stinky thing that makes you cry all the time. You know, 80 years back, I decided I'd run off and work for this great thinker, but now I kind of regret that decision. 80 years is a long time. Mature skills shine and the new era dawns, you know our stamp of quality, hailing from Condom and Tower. We're the jack of all rebuilders. There's so much more. Dwarves got beards. Nobody knows why, but that's all there is to it, right? Well, not all Grenadine. I hear Grenadine's been working non-stop day and night trying to find the answer to the riddle of the beard. So touching seeing him get all fired up about this. Grenadine's a genius, you know how I know, how I know? Because I've had no clue at all what he's thinking. That doesn't make a genius. I have no clue what I'm thinking and that doesn't make me a genius. We dwarves used to be smooth at cheek and absolutely hairless around the mouth regions. One day a dwarf woke up with a full head of hair and growing straight out of his chin. Guy must have been terrified, I tell ya. And can you imagine how much the other dwarves must have teased him? I mean, he alone of all the dwarves had a beard. But then, one by one, each dwarf woke up to find that he too had a full beard of his own. Who's laughing now, right? And so it goes, spreading from dwarf to dwarf, and planet to dwa planet, even after dwarves were ain't seen for generations. And now, wherever you go, dwarves got beards. Some folks say it's, a, it's, it's the curse for teasing that first bearded dwarf. But me, I love my beard. I'm in on it now. I'm in on it. Randadine's waiting for you. Hurry up and go in. Listen, I don't want to alarm you, but... Folks say a lot of things about Grandine, and you do well not to pay too much attention to him. Because honestly, about 90% of what they say about Grandine, uh, Grandine is nothing but slag. I came here because I'd, n I'd heard how amazing Grandine was. I had no idea he'd be so strange though. I mean, have you talked to him? Not yet. But before I head upstairs, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope I will see you in the next episode as well. Until next time, bye-bye.